Today I would like to tell you a little bit about walk around because this is one of the basic but yet one of the most important inspection of the airplane. It is performed either by engineer or by pilot. We as engineers we perform this inspection most of the time after last flight of the day when we start our check and pilots they perform this check most of them before flight to ensure that airplane is safe to fly. During this procedure, we will perform systematic check of the outer surface of the airplane, which means that if there are no leaks, if there is no damage, if there are no dents, all those things will be inspected during walk around. And uh, every company has slightly different procedures for walk around and what to inspect during walk around. And of course, it depends if it is part of some checks, then you need to inspect maybe a bit more things. But today I would like to show you how to perform basic walk around on Boeing 737. And also I'll try to explain a bit uh, in the detail what are we inspecting and why we need to inspect that. So let's take a look on the apron. And as a first, we'll start with uh, waking up of the airplane, which means that we need to switch on the batteries and connect the ground power. Once we do that, we'll wait until the cockpit will wake up and then we will go out and start with a walk around. And because of the brake check, we need to be sure that the parking brake is set and we have enough pressure in the brake accumulator. So I'll switch on the hydraulic power for a few seconds to pressurize the system, then I'll switch it off and I can go out. I'm always starting my walk around from the no section, which means that I'm inspecting windshields, fuselage about the windshields, radon. On these places, I'm checking if there is any sort of impact. After, for example, bird strike or hell strike, which will leave for sure markings. If that's okay, I need to take a look inside of the pitot probes because any sort of blockage can lead to misreading. Because if we don't count the GPS, the pitot probes are your only reference to airspeed and and you definitely want to know how fast you fly. As next, we will take a look in the nose landing gear compartment and here we searching for any kind of leak, crack or any sort of damage. Those panels on the sidewalls, they are quite important to check because they are part of pressurized structure of the airplane, so be sure that all the screws are tight. As next, I would like to mention that black dust which you can see on the wall that is actually rubber which comes from the wheels and it appeared there thanks to those two pads on the ceiling. They are here to stop wheels whenever the gear is retracted. It reduced vibrations but it also wear the tires so it has also disadvantages. From the wheel wall we continue on the left side of the airplane and we are checking the fuselage for dents, scratches or any other damage which can be caused by ground operations because no wheel tires can pick up any kind of debris and it can throw the debris on the fuselage. There are of course other possibilities how airplane can get damage on the ground but we'll get to it a little bit later on because now we need to take a look inside of the ram air intake. This actually brings the cold air to cool down heat exchangers which are part of the air conditioning system. And thanks to actuator and the door which you can see here on this picture we can control amount of the air which can get inside but with the air we can get inside some unwanted material like bird or piece of ice on the ground there is even high risk that we will suck any sort of debris from the ground inside of this duct that's why we have here this deflector door which will extend whenever airplane lands in the air this deflector door is closed so we can get as much air inside as possible and that's why we need to inspect it from there we continue with inspection of wind to body fairings and we need to check if there are no missing screws or delamination after that we need to inspect wheel bay of boeing 737 and for the person who never saw this place it can be a bit overwhelming because you can find here almost all hydraulic components flight control components and flap controls and basically we need to check general condition if there are no leaks if there is no damage if no we can continue further and by the way this is frangible fitting and i made separate video about this topic so you can find it in the top right corner or later on link will be in the description below 
As a next, we'll take a look on the leading edge of the wing. If there are no damage, we can continue further. And now we need to take a look on the intake of the engine. Again, we're searching for any sort of damage or delamination, which can be caused by suction of any sort of FOD. Again, the biggest enemies of the engines are the birds. So you need to take a look if there are no remains of the bird or any other sort of damage. After that, I'll inspect the engine oil level. This inspection should be done in five to 60 minutes after engine shutdown. But of course, this can be different from engine to engine. After that, we'll take a look on the fan coils and sea ducts. Then we'll inspect the bypass section if there are no delamination or damage. Then we take a look in the hot section. And of course, we'll inspect the vent tube. As a next, I'll take a look on the pylon, if there are no missing screw, rivets or any other sort of damage. After that, we can move to the left side of the engine and again we will inspect pylon, sea duct, fan coal. And if we find no damage, we can continue to inspection of the IDG oil level. It is quite easy on Boeing 737 because you don't need to open fan curl. More than enough is just to open this small access door on the fan curl. Before we can inspect the oil quantity, we need to vent IDG. For this, we have this small button. And whenever pressure is released, we can take a look on the side glass. And on the side glass, we have quite important information, which basically says IDG oil level left and right. This refers to IDG installation on the engine because each engine has slightly different angle on which it is installed on the wing. That's why we need to have a two scales. And since oil level on my IDG is okay, we can continue further. After engine we continue with the wing, where we again looking for obvious damage. Then we will take a look on the winglet, on which we can find of course all sorts of lights like anti-collision lights or navigation lights. In this case, since we check in the left wing, we can find the red and white on the tail. Then we look on the ailerons, flaps, flap track fairings and again we searching for obvious damage or missing screws, anything what can affect safety of the airplane. Then we'll take a look on the landing gear. And again, we're looking for the cracks, any sort of damage, leak from the shock absorber. General condition, everything needs to look good. And as well, we are checking wheels and brakes if they are in the limit. Then I'll inspect extension and retraction components for general conditions. Of course, they need to be cracked and leak free. If there it's okay, we can continue. And if you work on 737 and you change wheel number one or four, you most probably met this in their door. They cause a lot of pain to the mechanics. And from there, we will move to the aft section of the airplane. And again, we're looking for any sort of damage, missing screw, dent, scratch, any sort of damage which can be caused by ground operation. Then we take a look on the tail of the airplane, which means they will inspect vertical and horizontal stabilizer. And again, we are looking for any sort of damage caused by, for example, bird strike. Then we are looking also for the hydraulic leaks because inside of the tail you have hydraulic components which are helping you with the control of the airplane. Another thing which we can find inside of the tail is APU, which means that during walk around you need to inspect the tail also for oil leak. And as well intake, which you can see here on the side and exhaust on the tail. Now we are looking on outflow valve and thanks to this device we are controlling the pressure inside of the cabin during flight. I'm just passing by aft cargo and on those doors and on the threshold of the cargo doors many times you can find dents caused during loading and offloading of the airplane. So it's quite important to pay attention to these doors. I already performed quite big inspection inside so I'm just passing by. As a next, we'll take a look on the access door to standby hydraulic system. If there are no leaks, if everything is okay, we are continue to right main landing gear and we are doing basically the same inspection as on the left side, which means wear pin of the brakes, condition of the wheels, condition of the landing gear and extension and retraction components. If there are no leaks and everything is okay, we can move to the right side of the landing gear wheel well. 
and again and here is a lot of to see and a lot of to inspect at the moment we're looking on the flap components there you can see flap control unit flap motor from there we are moving to the front section and this is all about hydraulic and if you want to know more about the hydraulic system i made separate video how to service it where you can find each component so if you want to know more about this system click on the link in top right corner or later on you will find this link in description below from the wheel wall we are moving to the right wing and we are doing basically the same thing which means that again we are looking for any obvious damage now we are looking on the right winglet and on that one we can find green navigation light. Now we are looking on the leading edge and actually on the right wing we can find refueling panel where you can pre-select volume and of course you are connecting their refueling truck. From wing we move to the right engine and we are doing basically the same inspection as on the left engine which means that we will take a look on the oil level, we will check the bypass, then we will inspect exhaust vent tube, the left sea duct, of course if there are no missing screws on the pylon, then we'll inspect the left IDG and again we need to vent it and of course we need to be sure on which side of the scale we are looking, when everything is ok we can close the compartment and then we'll inspect the intersection of the wing, inlet of the engine, then we'll take a look on the blades. After engine we'll take a look in the right side the ram air inlet. And if everything is ok here we can continue with inspection of the front fuselage. Now we are passing around forward cargo door but again I already inspected. And that's more or less it. Of course this was very basic walk around. There can be a lot of other inspections. But since my inspection is done I can switch off the airplane and we can go. This was more or less all about walk around. If you have any questions please write them down in the comments below and I'll as always answer them as soon as possible. As always I would like to ask you to don't use this as a replacement for your maintenance manual or for your inspections please always follow the procedures which are released by your company or by manufacturer that's all from my side my name is Tomasz this was aircraft maintenance with Zeto and I will see you on the next video bye